What's going on everybody? Captain Mike here, Well, Eyes and More Sport Fishing Charters and the Door County Outdoors Radio Show. We're gonna talk crankbaits today, guys. And in particular, my three favorite crankbaits for trolling and casting for walleyes out on the Bay of Green Bay. I'm gonna tell you what those three crankbaits are, how I use them, when I use them, and where I use them, coming up right after this. All right, so we're talking crankbaits today, as I said. In particular, my three favorites for trolling and casting for walleyes out on Green Bay. So let's get right into it. First of all, and I know it's no surprise to anybody, is the Berkeley Flicker Shad, particularly in sizes five, six, and seven. Now, before we get into when and where to use each one of those different sizes, let's talk a little bit about what makes the Flicker Shad so effective when it comes to putting walleyes in the boat, especially out on Green Bay. First, let's talk about the size and profile of the Flicker Shad. It's a perfect imitation of a variety of different bait fish species found out on Green Bay, particularly the Gizzard Shad, which as most of you know, is a primary food source for walleyes. It has a tight, subtle swimming action with just a little bit of a roll, as you can see. And that is a great imitator of a wounded or distressed bait fish moving through the water column. This tight, subtle action also helps the flicker shad produce throughout the entire open water season. Starting in April, as we're trolling the lower bay, even into the rivers at times, through those hot summer months when we see water temperatures up into the 70s and sometimes near 80 on the far lower end of the bay, all the way through November, when that water is just before ice up, and even at night, a lot of times when we're trolling larger stick baits, I'll usually have at least one or two flicker shads running close to the boat to target those little intermediate depths as opposed to those really shallow flats. So the action and the size and profile of the flicker shad makes it a year round producer for me out on Green Bay. Also, the flicker shad has a great sound to it or a great rattle chamber as you might refer to it, which really helps produce a lot of fish. Sound is often an overlooked factor when it comes to crankbait selection and the productivity of a crankbait, and the flicker shad has it dialed in perfectly for what walleyes want. Studies have shown that walleyes tend to favor crankbaits or sounds that have a little higher pitch to them as opposed to a deeper knocking sound that you might find in a square bill crankbait or something else that we would use more for smallmouth bass. So this higher pitched rattle, as you can hear, that the flicker shad emits really does help walleyes tune into that bait and strike it far more often than some other crankbaits. So don't overlook sound when it comes to choosing crankbaits and the flicker shad really hits it on the number when it comes to this. Now, as we mentioned, there are a variety of different sizes that the flicker shad comes in, but I almost exclusively use the number five, six, and seven sizes. So let's break down where and when I would use each one of these sizes. First, let's start with the number seven size, which is kind of the industry standard, you might say, when it comes to trolling for walleyes out on Green Bay. It is a perfect size to imitate those shad, as we mentioned. It displaces the right amount of water. It gets down to the depths that we need it to. You can run it from shallow water all the way into that 14, 15, sometimes even 16 feet of water, and it's still really effective. If you're looking for one size to get you through the early season, summer months, and then back again into the fall, the number seven is the one you want to look at. Now, when it comes to the smaller number five size flicker shad, I'm a little bit more specific in where I run this bait as opposed to the number seven. The number five really shines when you're in that shallow water, especially those sand to rock transition areas. Anytime I find a lot of sand or rocks mixed in, that's where I like to pull out the number five and run that thing right over the top. It does a great job of imitating a young of the year bait fish, and especially gobies, which I know a lot of you already know, but is becoming a main food source for walleyes out on Green Bay. The smaller size also works well in very clear water situations where you might not want the bigger profile of the number seven. Sometimes when the water's really clear or if it's a calm, quiet day, running that number five and displacing a little less water and being a little more subtle, as you might say, will help produce a lot more bites than the number seven would on those situations. The number six size flicker shad is a very unique crankbait that I only use in one specific situation, and that's when I'm casting. What makes the number six so unique compared to the other sizes is that it actually suspends, unlike the five, seven, nines, and the rest of the series. What I like about that is when you're casting, it really helps trigger bites to be able to pause that bait, whether you're coming off of rocks or ripping it through some emergent weed beds or any environment where you might have a walleye following, the ability to pause that in front of them and hover that there for a second will trigger a lot of bites. Think about how we use bass style crankbaits, any kind of suspending jerkbait early in the year in a cold water period or even in the summer months, the ability to jerk, jerk, pause or reel it steady and pause triggers a lot of bites. It's no different with the number six flicker shad. The ability to hold that bait in the water column right in front of those fish as they follow it on a cast 
can make a big difference in determining whether or not you get bit. Another thing to consider when casting is that we don't have that bait in the strike zone as long as we do when we're trolling. So any minor changes like stopping, starting, pausing, keeping that bait, as I said, suspended in front of those fish makes a big difference when it comes to getting bites in that short period of time that that bait is in the strike zone. So when it comes to flicker shads, we've got the number five, which I mentioned is great for shallow water, sand, rock transition areas. The number seven, which is just your perfect all around choice if you're gonna go with one size. And then the number six, when it comes to casting, that suspending nature of that bait really shines in those areas. If you get a combination of those three sizes of flicker shads, you're gonna put a ton of walleyes in the boat this year. The second crankbait on my three favorite list is without a doubt the Salmo Hornet, particularly the model 5F. The five stands for the size and the F is for floating. The Salmo Hornet produces during a shorter window for me than the flicker shad will, for example, but when the conditions are right, very few baits will put as many fish as fast in the boat as the Salmo Hornet will. The conditions that we're looking for when we run the Hornet are warmer water, aggressive fish, and relatively shallower water for the most part. I love this bait when the temperatures are starting to climb into the 60 degree range, especially into that 70 degree range, and anytime we're running over those shallow rock, emergent weed beds, or any kind of areas where fish are pushed up shallow and actively feeding. When you get these scenarios, the Selma Hornet will catch fish at an amazing rate. As you can see, the Hornet has a much different shape and design to it than the Flicker Shad, for example, as it's much shorter and stubbier, and it also has a much different action when moving through the water column. It has a wider wobble and a more aggressive hunting action, and this is what triggers bites from those aggressive fish, especially in that warm water. There's no question you can catch fish from cooler water periods as well with this bait, but when the metabolism is high on these walleyes and they're actively feeding and it waters up into that mid 60, as we said, up and in especially into the 70 degree range, this is the bait I go to. It is my primary choice for those midsummer months when we're hunting shallow flats down on the lower bay. And if you guys add it to your arsenal, it's gonna put a lot of fish in the boat for you as well. So the last crankbait on my three favorite list is the Berkeley Flicker Mail. While it's another great product from Berkeley, it's definitely different than the Flicker Shad. As you can see, it has a much narrower, elongated profile than the Flicker Shad, and it does a great job of imitating bigger bait fish species out in the bay, primarily alewise, but also perch and even young of the year whitefish at times. It comes in three primary sizes, the number seven, the nine, and the 11, and I focus most of my attention on the number seven and the number nine sizes. The seven when we're running in shallower water, sometimes in conjunction with the Flicker Shads, and the number nine is are trolling the deeper water or out on top of reef structures up in the middle to the northern part of Door County. And when those big fish are going in that late summer period, a lot of times they'll switch to the number 11 size and target fish with those. So what makes the flicker minnow so effective? Well, it also has a tight swimming action similar to the flicker shad, but a little bit different in its own right. And it does a great job of catching fish that are suspended in a clear water environment or even on deep structure. You can get it down 18 to 22 feet without any problem, and that allows us to target fish throughout the entire water column. And because it does such a good job of imitating alewives, it is a great bait, as I said, to run through suspended fish, especially in that clear water to the northern part of the county. If you're looking for a bait to target fish that are a little bit more offshore or a little bit deeper, then the flicker minnow is a choice you wanna to go to. So that's basically it guys. Those are my three top choices when it comes to trolling and casting crankbaits on the Bay of Green Bay for walleyes. Get yourself a combination of flicker sheds in the number five, six, seven sizes. Get a mix of Salmo Hornets in the number five F size, and then some Berkeley flicker minnows in number seven, nine, and 11. And you're gonna have all you need to put a bunch of walleyes in the boat this season. Thanks for watching guys. Please comment if you liked it, hit that like button and subscribe to the channel as we're gonna be putting out a lot more videos here in the near future. Thanks again, everyone, and we'll talk to you soon.